Chris here and welcome to my channel and as you can see by my setup it's time to play phase 10 chooses my TBR. So I'm gonna apologize in advance for the low lighting but it's like 2 a.m and it is the first moment I have had to sit down and film where it hasn't been so incredibly hot in my room and it hasn't been thundering. We've had like thunderstorms which has made it really muggy so my room's been hot and it's just been terrible. I've had a very, very busy month. So this is like the first opportunity I had to film. It's technically June 28th and I, I need to film this so I can get it out to you guys. So hopefully you'll forgive me for the bit of low lighting. That being said, I am not participating in any readathons in July. I need a month off. So I'm giving myself a break. I do have some other stuff that I'm still doing. I'm doing the Catch-Up Book Club, so I believe I have July and August to read Best Serve Cold by Joe Abercrombie. This is a standalone in this universe's series. I can't think of the name of it, but the First Law Trilogy, this like follows it, but is a standalone. I'm doing the Middle Grade March Book Club, and the pick for that is Three Strike Summer. And it says there are only three rules at Santa Ana Holston Peach Orchard. No stealing product, no drunkenness or gambling, and absolutely no organizing. Well, Gloria Mae Willard isn't about to organize any peaches. No, ma'am. She's got more on her mind than that. Like the secret all-boys baseball team she's desperate to play for. If only they'd give her a chance. Or the way that wages keep going down. The way their company lodgings are dirty and smelly. And everyone seems intent on leaving her out of everything. But Gloria has never been the type to wait around for permission. If the boys won't let her play, she'll find a way to make them. If the people around her are keeping secrets, then she'll keep a few of her own. And if the boss men at the Santa Ana Holston Peach Orchard say she can't organize peaches then by golly, she'll organize a whole ball game. Over the course of a single summer, Gloria May will have to find her voice and learn how to use it in this fresh atmospheric tale of moxie peaches and one girl's determination to thrive despite the odds. So curious about this, hoping I love it and really excited to have an easy middle grade on my TBR. Then I'm still doing Buzz Wordathon and the prompt for this month is weather. So I'll be reading We Speak in Storms. I don't know really anything about it, but it was literally the only book I had that really featured some sort of weather. So I'll be giving it a go. Then for the TBR knockout, the prompts were blue on the cover. So I'm going to read Echo's Sister, which is a summer cover. So I'm going to go into it blind, but there is blue all over this cover. And then a book you think will make you cry. And I'm going to go with Grey Stripe's Vow. So this is a standalone in the Warriors series. And we're going to be following Grey Stripe. And based on the description and where I believe this take place in the series, I'm like 3000% positive this is going to make me cry. So I figured it was a good time to stick it on my TBR and get it out of the way. I say that like I'm not looking forward to reading it. I really, really am. Grey Stripe is one of my favorite cats in the whole series. So I'm very curious to see what happens to Grey Stripe and how the events that are going on at this time were seen from Grey Stripe's perspective. Then for my nonfiction, I'm going to be reading Fine, a comic about gender. And this is literally what it says on the tin. It's a comic about gender. It's nonfiction. I don't know much more about that, but it was something I saw in June. It looked interesting and I decided to snag it for July to keep that kind of pride going, even though Pride Month is over. Which brings me to this bad boy. Now, before I get to this, I wanted to let you know that I will be rolling over Ruin. I just did not have enough time to get to it. So I'm really hoping this doesn't come out of the jar again because then I would have to read the last two in there, Giant. June was just a crazy month for me, but I am rolling it over. I will finish it. But that means I need to pick my three for July. So let's see what this silly little jar has in store for me this month. I am terrified. Not gonna lie. We're going with the yellow one. Because... I just, I need something light, and I'm worried that I'm going to get, like, the sequel to Ruin, and, like, Robin Hobb, and Robert Jordan, you know? Like, three big, chunky adult fantasies, which, while I'm excited about, I don't necessarily want to have to read all in the same month. So, the first series I got, we get to pull again, because it's Doodleville by Chad Sell, and this was a duology, and I finished it. So let's replace that one. I do have quite a few in here that I've uh, finished. So that's nice. Let's see. This red one. Ooh. The Story Collector by Kristen O'Donnell Tubb. I can do that. 
So I own the second book. It's The Story Seeker, and this is a historical fiction series that takes place at the New York Public Library, if I remember correctly. We follow Viviani, who lives in the New York Public Library. And I don't want to read what this one's about, but yes, this is the one that takes place at the New York Public Library, and I do believe it is historical fiction, because I did just take it off my historical fiction self. So, totally down to read this in July. My second series... is Nothing by Alejandra Green. Let's see if I can get the second one. So the second book in this series is available in my library system, but a bunch of the copies are out, only one are in, and it says pending, so I should be able to get it. So we're going to go with it. As usually when it says pending, it means I am next in line, and a few copies are due back, so hopefully, because I've requested that, I will be able to get it. And then the third series is Shelby and Watts. So the second book in the series is called A Mount of a Problem, and this is a children's graphic novel series. And I believe it is kind of based on Sherlock and Watson, if my memory is correct. And I believe in the first one it deals with I think like a missing shell or something like that and it talks about like beach safety and shells at the beach that are safe and my goodness my tbr jar was very nice to me because it gave me a middle grade historical fiction i'm not sure what age group nothing is for but that's a graphic novel and then a children's graphic novel which i think it said was like 91 pages okay well uh that makes up for ruin last month and all of these go back. I think Shelby and Watts would be caught up on. So I'm going to leave that one out. Same with nothing. I think I think maybe all three of those would, would be caught up if I got them. So that means I can put this away for the month and be very happy that it was nice to me because I really, really needed a break. <laughs> so that brings me to the game. So, like I said, it is the early hours of the 28th, and I believe I have four books left on my Phase 10 TBR. I have Finna, which is really short, really quick. Ways to Make Sunshine, another really quick, easy story. The Camelot Code, of which I'm on page 214, so no reason I shouldn't finish that. And The Curse of the Chocolate Phoenix, which has disappeared somewhere into my bedroom. I had it a little while ago, then I started moving things around so that I could film, and I have no idea where it ended up, but I'm reading that one. Fairly certain I'm going to DNF that one, and I see no reason why I won't finish these three, so I'm going to take a reward. So, I don't know why I'm picking that up. Like I did last month, I'm just going to mix these up, and we'll pull one. And whatever one we pull is the prompt I'll replace. Okay, and we're going to go with this one here. A red 11. Okie dokie. So this is going to come down and we will pick that one right there. Okay. Unfortunately, I will not be getting that reward <laughs> because if I get an 11, it's going over here. And once I finish that phase, I have to start the board over again which means I won't be redoing the board. So even if I complete my phase, I can't get that prompt. So that prompt is kind of useless. We're mixing the prompt in that I took off the board. These keep wanting to spill. And then we'll mix these back in just in case I might be able to get that red 11 again because I do need it to finish my phase. So... As you can see, I'm going for 11s and 1s. I just need two cards and I finish the phase and then I can redo my board, which, I mean, it really, really needs to be redone because I take all of the prompts off and start over, though I will keep these where they are. So, let's get into the game and hope that it's nice to me and does not give me any wilds. Draw number one. I jinxed it. I jinxed it. My TBR jar was too nice to me. And, and of course, I, I started with, with a wild, great, great, just lovely. <sighs> Draw number one, part two, is a yellow nine. Okay, 
yellow nine. The prompt is, ooh, fantasy. So I'm gonna make this real easy on myself and go with Magical Boy Volume 2. So I read Magical Boy Volume 1 in June and it follows a boy named Max who is trans and finds out that he is descendant from a long line of magical girls. And while that doesn't go for him, he has no desire to be a magical girl. So he has to figure out a way to embrace being a magical boy. Really, really love the first one. It's a duology from what I can tell. So wanted to finish it in July. So I requested the copy from the library and here we go, sticking it on my TBR. So far, easy TBR, which I may or may not need. Draw number two is a blue eight. And that's a reward. Let's see. My reward is combine two prompts. Sweet. Okay, so at some point during this round, I can pick a prompt and combine it. So if I got, say, hardcover or graphic novel, I could pick this back up and put it back on my TBR. That is amazing. So at some point, I will get to reuse a book that's already on my TBR. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I like that reward. <laughs> Draw number three is a blue 10. And the prompt is red cover. Okay, so for red cover, I'm going to go with the Wizards of Once, not three times. You would not believe how hard it was to find a red cover. Apparently, that is not something I have tons of. Found a bunch of pink ones, though. <laughs> so this is the third book in the Wizards of Once series that follows a witch and a wizard? No, a warrior and a wizard, who are led to believe that their peoples are enemies and they meet in the first book and it kind of challenges their perceptions. The audiobooks for these are absolutely fantastic, so very, very excited <laughs> to be reading this one. Even though it wasn't in my plans, I think it'll be a fun, fast read. Draw number four is a yellow four. And the prompt for yellow four is odd page number. So I'm going to go with the story seeker for this because it ends on page 247, which is an odd number, and I've got to read it anyways. And I think it'll be a quick read and... I don't want to use my double up yet. I don't know if either of those is an odd number, but I don't want to use it quite yet because I would like to use it on something that may be a little bit harder to fill. Draw number five. Oh, easy one. Okie dokie. We're going to go with the green nine because hopefully I'll get them both so it won't matter which one I pick right now. Green nine. Contemporary. So for this, I'm going to read Reggie and Delilah's Year of Falling by... Elise Bryant, and this is a contemporary romance following Delilah, who keeps her messy gooey insides hidden and goes with the flow, which is how she ends up singing in her friend's punk band as a favor, even though she'd prefer to hide at the merch table, and Reggie, who is a D&D &D dungeon master and self-declared blurred. He spends his free time leading quests and writing essays critiquing the game under a pseudonym, keeping it all under wraps from his disapproving family. The two of them are going to meet for the first time on New Year's Eve, then Valentine's Day, then St. Patrick's Day, and it's almost like the universe is pushing them together. Delilah wishes she was more like Reggie, open about what she likes and who she is, even if it's not cool. Except it's all a front. Reggie is just role-playing someone confident, the kind of guy who could be with a girl like Delilah. As their holiday meetings continue, the two begin to fall for each other, but what happens once they realize they've fallen for a version of the other that doesn't really exist? This was one I saw, I believe, on Twitter. In the month of June, it sounded interesting, and I thought I would give it a try, and I need a contemporary, so perfect. It's a little different than the contemporaries I would normally choose, but I'm hoping that I love it. Draw number six is a green five. And the prompt for green five is audio or ebook. So for this, I'm going to read Dead in the Shop by Dahlia Donovan. This is the third and final book in the Grasmere Cottage trilogy. I read the first two, really enjoyed them. They end on giant cliffhangers, both of them, so I wished I could have just read them back to back to back. But since I didn't, I will read the third one in July and wrap that trilogy up. Perfect. Draw number seven is a blue four. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. no. 
scrap your TBR. That means everything I just mentioned you can completely forget because I have to pick books for all of those prompts all over again. And I can't use any of the books I mentioned. So first up, for fantasy, I'm going to go with Darkness of Dragons, which is the 10th book in the Wings of Fire series. This is a series that follows clans of magical dragons. I've really enjoyed it. It's one of my series to continue, so sticking it on the TBR. For a cover, I'm going to go with The Maid, which I believe is like a mystery. No, it says Thrills and Chills, so maybe a thriller. I don't know much about it. If it's a thriller, I don't want to know much more about it. It is legitimately one of only two other books I could find that have a red cover, so... Thankful I have no more punishments to screw this up for me. For odd page number, I'm going to go with The Lost Continent, which is book 11 in the Wings of Fire series, and this comes in at 301 pages, so I have that. For contemporary, I'm going to read Different Kinds of Fruit by Kyle Luckoff. This follows Annabelle, who expects sixth grade to be the same as every year. So no one is more shocked when the first day of school delivers a big surprise, a new kid named Bailey who has a cute smile and nice hands. How can someone even have nice hands? It turns out sixth grade is going to be anything but the same. And when her father reveals that he and Bailey have something big and surprising in common, Annabelle begins to realize how labels she thought were fixed. Same, different, boy, girl, gay, straight, and even fruit and vegetable aren't so clear after all. Very much looking forward to this one. Really enjoyed the other book I read by Kyle Luckoff, so I'm hoping I enjoy this one as well. And then for audiobook or ebook, I'm going to read The Trials of Apollo, The Dark Prophecy. This is the next book in my Percy Jackson read-along. We're going to be doing The Dark Prophecy and The Burning Maze. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. If you want to hop in my Discord, the link is below. We've been doing a read-along of all the Percy Jackson universe books, so feel free to hop in and join us. This is book two. Very excited. It's my favorite series in the Percy Jackson universe. Apollo is one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character. I absolutely adore this series, so I'm very much looking forward to rereading it. Okay, so now I've got to draw that prompt again. So we're just going to pop this four up here because I don't get to get a free book out of that. And we'll go with draw number seven, part two, is a six. And I almost just lost all of my prompts. Well, let's put you right side up. And the prompt for Red Six. It's TBR Vet. So for this, I'm going to read The Trouble with Magic by Madeline All. I got this sometime before 2019. I don't know exactly when. That's how much of a TBR vet it is. It's a cozy mystery. We're going to be following um, shop clerk Maggie O'Neill and her employee Felicity Dow do more than conjure up curios for the locals. They they each possess a talent for spell binding sleuthing. Bored with her office job and subsequently fired for excessive tardiness, Maggie jumps at the opportunity to work in enchantments. She was a little weirded out when Felicity described her as a witch, but if her boss wants to play with broomsticks and cauldrons, where's the harm? However, Maggie's first day on the job may turn out to be her last when police question Felicity and the murder of her estranged sister. With everyone in town proclaiming Felicity's guilt faster than the Salem Whist trials, Maggie finds herself wondering if she'll also be tied to the stake. And lately, she's been receiving messages on a spiritual frequency, guiding her to prove Felicity's innocence and to embrace her own charmed life. So, cozy mystery with a fantasy twist. Been on my TBR for a really long time. About time to see if it's a series I would like to read. Draw number eight is a three. And the prompt for green three different culture. So for this, I'm going to go with We Are Not From Here. This follows Holga, Chico, and Pequena. And these three teens have one another, but none of them have illusions about the town they've grown up in and the dangers that surround them. Even with the love of family, threats lurk around every corner. And when those threats become all too real, the trio knows they have no choice but to run from their countries, from their families, from their beloved home. Crossing from Guatemala through Mexico, they follow the route of La Bestia, the perilous train system that might deliver them to a better life, if they are lucky enough to survive the journey. With nothing but the bags on their backs and desperation drumming through their hearts, Polga, Chico, and Pequena know there is no turning back despite the unknown that awaits them, and the darkness that seems to follow wherever they go. In the striking portrait of lives torn apart, the plight of migrants at the U.S. southern border is brought to light through poignant, vivid storytelling and epic journey of danger, resilience, heartache, and hope. Definitely think I'm going to see a bit of a different culture there, given that these kids are from Guatemala and are going to be fleeing and they're migrants. 
I definitely think that qualifies as a different culture, and I think it's going to be very, very hard-hitting and very relevant to things going on today. So this is what I'll be reading for different culture. Turn number nine. I completed my phase, which means I get a skip or a swap. I'll be using the six, and next month, you'll have a completely fresh board. So, blue six. The prompt for blue six is lowest rated. So with the very low rating of 3.15, I'm going with Again and Again by E. Lockhart. This says, if you could live your life again, what would you do differently? After a near-fatal family catastrophe and an unexpected romantic upheaval, Adelaide Buckwald finds herself catapulted into a summer of wild possibility, a summer that will stretch across not only days and months, but a myriad of realities. Told in a lyrical multiverse of different timelines, this wildly inventive romantic tale follows Adelaide as she falls in and out of love a thousand times, while finally confronting the secrets she keeps, her ideas about love, and the weird grandiosity of the human mind. A raw, funny story that will surprise you over and over, again, again, gives us an indelible heroine grappling with the terrible and wonderful problem of loving other people. Well, I don't have a lot of high hopes for this one. I mean, it sounds interesting, but if everybody's given it a 3.15 rating on average, I really don't have high hopes. So we'll see how this goes. And the last of my regular draws, and I lost a card. It's behind the bookcase. I'm not going to get it. it it's down there. We all know it's down there. I knew I heard something go when I was trying to figure out what my lowest rated was. Well, now we know what it was. Anyways, uh, draw number 10. It's a red four. Okay, I'll take it. And the prompt for red four. No people on the cover. So I was tempted to use my bonus there. But I had a really easy book that I could use for this one that isn't going to add much to my TBR, and hopefully I'll be able to double up with one of my wild prompts, and that is Pride, an inspirational history of the LGBTQ plus movement. There are no people on this cover. This is a nonfiction, and it's going to teach us about Pride. So figured this was an easy book I could use to fulfill this prompt and one I was quite interested in, which means it's time for my wild roll, and let's hope it is low. Oh, oh. One. I got a one, guys. Which means it's going to be a wild with the way this game is going. If not, I can legitimately, legitimately pick any book that's already on my TBR if I can find a way to make it match this prompt. Otherwise, I just completely lose my reward. Okay. Well, I'll still take the one. I'd rather have a one and lose my reward than a six and be able to use my reward. So, wild one. Draw one. Hopefully the last draw of the entire game is a yellow two. I'm done, guys. I'm done. I'm done. And a yellow two is... BIPOC wrap. So I wasn't sure that I could use We Are Not From Here as BIPOC wrap. I'm always very, very confused as to what counts as... BIPOC rap if I'm going outside of like black and indigenous because I don't want to get it wrong. So let me know if this would have counted as like a person of color because I'm always very, very confused and I, I just don't feel like taking the time to Google to try to figure it out tonight because it is three o'clock in the morning. I'm hot and tired. So instead, I'm just going to go with Isaiah Dunn is My Hero by Kelly J. Baptist. This is a short book. It comes off my TBR, so that actually works really well. And it says, in her stirring debut novel, Kelly J. Baptist explores the indomitable spirit of Isaiah Dunn, a boy who, in the wake of family tragedy, leans on a love of words and his community to discover the superhero strength it takes to grow up. So, sounds like a hard-hitting contemporary. I've got my BIPOC rap. And it's another book off my TBR. So... I suppose that's better than nothing. This has been the most chaotic game of Phase 10 I think I've ever done. The cats were not happy. There were points when I had to go out and look for books and they were running all over the place because they were sleeping and they were sleeping in front of books. And yeah, it's it's been a month. Hopefully I will get this out to you relatively quickly. You'll know seeing this. And yeah, I see no reason why my reward won't stay, but it was a spot I couldn't pull anyway. So if I, for some reason I don't finish my TBR, 
then next month I will let you know and we'll replace that with a punishment prompt. But that is all for me. That is my TBR. Please let July go better than June did because I am tired. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap this TBR video up here. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me the little Z emojis for like sleepy or like the, the emoji of like a, a sleepy face or something. Something to do with like sleeping because I'm tired. <laughs> like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!